The idea of aliens visiting Earth in ancient times has gained popular acceptance in recent years. Many now believe the extraordinary rise of human civilization in the distant past to be the result of extraterrestrial social engineering. Evidence seems to suggest that Bronze Age interaction with extraterrestrials may have spawned a variety of sky god myths in the Middle East that over time evolved into rigid orthodoxies and religions. And consequently, these orthodoxies gained powerful political sway over the many ethnic regions of the Middle East. Ultimately, it was the Empire of Rome that rose to dominate and consolidate political and religious authority over the entire Mediterranean world. Since its inception, over a thousand years ago, the Vatican has vigorously denied the possibility of intelligent life existing elsewhere in the cosmos. The Church originally defined a worldview declaring the Earth was flat and that all the universe revolved around it, elevating the Pope himself to the high pinnacle as God's vicar, custodian of all wisdom and knowledge. Secular challenges to that established orthodoxy have been historically met with severe punishment. In 1600, philosopher Giordano Bruno proclaimed his belief in a plurality of worlds, suggesting the possibility of extraterrestrial life, or aliens. The Church adamantly refuted his theories and burned Bruno as a heretic. In 1615, Galileo dared to challenge Church authority by claiming the Earth was not the center of the universe, but rather that the Earth revolved around the Sun, a theory also condemned as false and contrary to Holy Scripture. In 1632, the Holy Inquisition ordered Galileo to recant his heresies. Ultimately, he was not executed, but he was held under house arrest for the remainder of his life. But here in the early years of the 21st century, we are witness to astounding reversals in the Vatican's orthodox perceptions of universal cosmology. Perhaps to preserve its credibility and minimize the negative social impact of a potential ET revelation, a proactive public dialogue has been recently initiated. In November 2009, the Vatican hosted a conference on astrobiology. Pierre Lena, a French astrophysicist and member of the Pontifical Academy who pressed for the astrobiology conference, clearly stated, Astrobiology is a mature science that says very interesting things that could change the vision humanity has of itself. The Church cannot be indifferent to that. Keynote speaker at the conference, Dr. Chris Impey, astronomer from the University of Arizona, predicted a forthcoming extraterrestrial disclosure, saying the first discovery is only a few years away. And some Vatican scientists are even more explicit in embracing an extraterrestrial reality. Top Vatican astronomer, Brother Guy Consolmagno, states contemporary societies may soon look to the aliens to be the saviors of humankind. To illustrate the theological soundness of this possibility, Consolmagno argues that humans are not the only intelligent beings God created in the universe, and he says, these non-human life forms are described in the Bible. He starts by pointing to angels and then by referencing the Nephilim, and also quoting John 10:16, which says, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Dr. Christopher Corbelli, Vice Director of the Vatican Observatory Research Group on Mount Graham until 2012, believes our image of God will have to change if disclosure of alien life is soon revealed by scientists, including the need to evolve from the concept of an anthropocentric God into a broader entity. The late Monsignor Corrado Balducci often appeared on Italian TV to talk about Satanism, religion, and extraterrestrials. As an exorcist, theologian, and member of the Vatican Curia, and friend of the Pope, 
Balducci went perhaps furthest to state that ETs were not only possible, but already interacting with Earth, and that the Vatican's leaders were aware of it. Balducci flatly stated that extraterrestrial contact is real, and speaking as an official demonologist, he assured that extraterrestrial encounters are not demonic, they are not due to psychological impairment, and they are not a case of entity attachment, but these encounters deserve to be studied carefully. As well, Balducci emphasized, as God's power is limitless, it is not only possible, but also likely that inhabited planets exist. Balducci also shared a personal wish to be the spokesman for these star peoples who are part of God's glory, and I will continue to bring it to the attention of the Holy Mother Church. In a paper for the Interdisciplinary Encyclopedia of Religion and Science, Father Giuseppe Tanzella Nitti, an Opus Dei theologian of the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross in Rome, explains just how we could actually be evangelized during contact with spiritual aliens. As every believer in God would, he argues, greet an extraterrestrial civilization as an extraordinary experience and would be inclined to respect the alien and to recognize that our different species both originate from the same creator. According to Giuseppe, this contact by non-terrestrial intelligence would then offer new possibilities of better understanding the relationship between God and the whole of creation. Giuseppe states this would not immediately oblige the Christian to renounce his own faith in God simply on the basis of the reception of new, unexpected information of a religious character from extraterrestrial civilizations, but that such a renunciation could come soon after, as the new religious content originating from outside the earth is confirmed as reasonable and credible. Once the trustworthiness of the information has been verified, the believer would have to reconcile such new information with the truth that he or she already knows and believes on the basis of the revelation of the one and triune God, conducting a re-reading of the gospel inclusive of the new data. Father Jose Funes, a Jesuit astronomer, director of the centuries-old Vatican Observatory, and also a driving force behind the Astrobiology Conference, suggested that the possibility of brother extraterrestrials poses no problem for Catholic theology. As a multiplicity of creatures exist on earth, so there could be other beings also intelligent created by God. This does not conflict with our faith because we cannot put limits on the creative freedom of God. In a 2008 interview, Fune speculated on the question of whether extraterrestrials would need to be redeemed which he believes should not be assumed. God was made man in Jesus to save us, he says. If other intelligent beings exist, it is not said that they would have need of redemption. They could remain in full friendship with their creator. Funis currently heads the VORG, Vatican Observatory Research Group, and just as the new Pope Francis, Father Jose Gabriel Funes is also from Argentina where he entered the Jesuit order. In fact, one of his three examiners was Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio, who now reigns as Pope. Funes, who astounded the world with his essay, The Alien is My Brother, is famous for invoking St. Francis of Assisi as an apologetic for accepting ETs. To say it with St. Francis, if we consider some earthly creatures as brothers or sisters, why could we not speak of a brother alien? He would also belong to the creation. In other words, Funis and the Vorg are leading the charge to accept extraterrestrials at face value, even arguing they could be morally superior to humans. Author Tom Horn, in his new book, Exo Vaticana, further reveals the position of Father Jose Funes, who states that to not believe in the existence of aliens and be willing to accept their morally superior dogma, that is going to be the true heresy of the future. So you will be a heretic if you are unwilling to accept this morally superior and new form of the gospel. Such dialogues suggest Vatican astronomers are not simply indulging theoretical speculation, but they have a clear perception of an impending extraterrestrial arrival. 
Could these statements infer the Vatican's knowledge of the approach of a celestial intruder? In 2005, an account allegedly leaked from Vatican intelligence sources tells of a highly classified project codenamed Secretum Omega that involved a joint venture with NASA. In 1995, using the high-altitude space plane Aurora, the Papal State placed an infrared telescope into orbit. Called Silaway, this telescope was specifically designed to look for Planet X, otherwise known as the fabled Nibiru. It was also revealed that aside from the possible catastrophic effects of this planet's passing, this celestial object is home to a technologically advanced and warlike race. Catholic theologian Father Malachi Martin, a former Jesuit, before his death in 1999, hinted at something like imminent extraterrestrial contact more than once. While on Coast to Coast AM radio in 1997, Art Bell asked Martin why the Vatican was heavily invested in the study of deep space at the Mount Graham Observatory. As a retired professor of the Pontifical Biblical Institute, Martin was uniquely qualified to hold in secret information pertaining to VAT. Martin's answer ignited a firestorm of interest among Christian and secular theologists when he replied, because the mentality amongst those who are at the highest levels of Vatican administration and geopolitics know what's going on in space and what's approaching us could be of great import in the next five years, ten years. Certainly serious Vatican study of astronomical science cannot be denied. Considering its operation of VAT, Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, atop Mount Graham in Wilcox, Arizona. As well, the Vatican has one quarter interest in the new Lucifer binocular telescope on Mount Graham also. State-of-the-art infrared observatories, an explicit dialogue referencing extraterrestrials as our brothers, or moreover our saviors, suggest Jesuit astronomers are preparing for some pending celestial event of major proportions. The Vatican holds spiritual authority over one billion faithful followers worldwide, yet that leadership status has been rocked in recent years by chronic pedophile scandals as well as the recent unprecedented resignation of Pope Benedict. So it seems unthinkable that the Church would abandon age-old dogmas on a whim, with reckless claims about friendly space aliens, unless Vatican astronomers were convinced they had rock-solid substantiation. This raises the question of Vatican knowledge concerning Planet X.